Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 18th day of February 2019. Well, if you got the day off today because it's President's Day, good for you. Not everybody gets to do that, so that's pretty cool. Nice to have an extra day off during the week, isn't it? I could never decide whether I wanted that day to be Monday or Friday. I think that I, I, I liked them both. So if I had had my druthers, a three-day work week would have been fine with me. <laughs> so anyhow, I hope everybody had a good weekend. It can't decide what it wants to do around here. I think it's trying to melt, but then it gets really cold. So I think we're going to have a little more cold weather for a while. And there might be a little bit of snow, but I don't think we're going to get any kind of a deluge like we were afraid we would. But uh, you just never know around here what's going to happen. So, But today's Monday, so if you're going to uh, work magic today, today is also the maiden phase of the full moon. It turns full tomorrow in the morning, I think 7.55 or 7.54, something like that, at least here she does. And... Uh, so if you want to work, you know, like a triple aspect working, you know, starting one today, you know, working on it again tomorrow and finishing it up on, on the uh, crone face of the moon, you can do that. Another thing you could have done had you, had you already known to do this is you could, you could have done a knot spell on a uh, little knot magic on uh, the new moon and then released those knots on the full moon. You can also uh, do knot magic and release it on the new moon. And in other words, untie the knots on the cord to release that, that magic into the universe, to cast the intention that way. So, you know, knot magic can be used in a variety of different ways. It just doesn't have to be in the moment. I like to do knot spells on uh, knot magic on... Uh, uh, the new moon. I just think it's a really uh, personal way to interact, and uh, uh, you still basically you're you're either going to store up intention to be released at the full moon, or your, or maybe you're binding, or maybe you're you know whatever it is you're doing. But uh, I like to reserve the the crone phase, the uh, either the crone phase of the full moon or the new moon to do most of the stuff that I do. So, although you know. You do what you got to do when the time arises. So, you know, an emergency, you know, comes up, then do it, you know, shore up the spell any way you have to. If you've got, you know, some unfavorable energies sitting around, you know, trying to influence it all. But, you know, and you can do that. You can prevent those things from from influencing or at least having too much of an influence. So, you know, do so. You, so don't necessarily wait if you need to do something, you know, if something's out of control and you need to try to influence an ending to it, you know, or just bringing things to a still point. Seriously, don't, don't get caught up in the whole favorability business and, and aligned correspondence. You can always shore things up. So, and protect, you know, the working that you're performing. So anyhow, today is a, the 18th is a nine energy. So an energy of completion so maybe something's going to come to fruition or to a close or complete or maybe maybe a project's ending or you're about to start something new and so you're 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 bringing everything to a conclusion today well, I'm not very coordinated today I'm having trouble shuffling <laughs> Well if you haven't been here before welcome Click subscribe. I'd love you to do that. If you have, thanks so much for coming back. Ah. I do this four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Theoretically, I pull one card in one rune, but I usually pull three cards in one rune. So if I pull a cart card, a court card, <laughs> I can't talk either. If I pull a court card, I'm going to pull another one because court cards need something to interact with.
But basically, I don't do anything with respect to prediction, although sometimes what happens in with the cards actually uh, comes true. But I don't look at it that way. I look at what influences might nudge things along, really, or just things that we need to pay attention to during the day. Uh, so that's that's usually the focus. That's my intention anyway. Sometimes it turns out to be a little different than that, but but we don't usually know that till the next day or the day after. <laughs> but but to uh, uh, where you can kind of look back and go, okay, did that happen? You know, something feels a little weird there. So so what happened that day? Was there something in the cards that might have signaled it? You know, the possibility of something. So. And the other thing that I do is I is I count 13. 13 figures prominently into my life. I was born on October 13th. And so um, lots of 13s come up in my life just on their own. So I just, so how I do this is I count 13 and I take that card. So that's what we'll do here. So let's get started. So there's 13. Oh, I've been getting a lot of fours lately in readings. And today is no different. Let me get my, I do this lemon honey cleanse every morning. And I got to tell you, I love it. I just love it. I, I feel better. I feel, um, they say that, you know, if you, if you keep your body alkaline, illness doesn't really take hold. And I think that that may be true. So, so doing this actually helps with that. So, you know, because we eat a lot of food that, that, that really doesn't make any sense, <laughs> you know, that doesn't combine well together. And then we end up feeling like crap. And so if we can kind of keep things flowing, I do a lot of herbal teas and whatnot. So I try to keep things flowing through the body so they don't get stuck. That way I don't get sick again. So, because I was sick for a really long time and I don't want to go back to that. But anyway, we have the Four of Swords. We've been getting the Four of Pentacles lately. Also the Four of Cups. Well, today is the Four of Swords. Here you can see one sword down there at the bottom. But what's happening here? is that this is a moment of respite where we're letting our thoughts settle and we're just, uh, maybe we've had a lot of stuff coming in on us. We've had to make a lot of decisions maybe, or, or things are just kind of, you know, in flux maybe, and we just need a timeout. So no, he's not dead. He's just, he's just laying there thinking, letting thoughts gel in his head, taking time out to consider the, the foundation of things and where things are going. So aligning with the nine day. So what's been going on? You know, have, have things been uh, uh, in so much in flux that, that this sense of completion, maybe we uh, are taking a time out today to, to sort of uh, bring everything to a close in our mind about something. Maybe that's what the completion is about. Maybe we've just been thinking about too many things and have too many concerns, too many worries, maybe uh, many decisions to have to make. And now we're just going to take a time out and, and think about how all of that applies to the foundation of our life, to the, you know, when you're talking about that, you're talking about the pentacles aspect of life where it's, all of the mundane issues that we then have to make decisions about or have feelings about or manifest something about, right? But that's where it all, it all begins is in pentacles, at least from the earth standpoint, from the body standpoint. Um, from there, it's how do all these other, you know, influence, how, how do all these elements influence us? And so uh, the, the mundane aspects of our life. So here we clearly have a guy who's just had a lot to think about and he just needs to take a time out and do that. And maybe go over everything in his mind and say, okay, what am I forgetting? You know, if, if, if there's like a project that needs to get completed, what do I need to make sure? You know, you just kind of, it's just a moment to maybe take stock, maybe a little bit. And, and that can be for any number of reasons, really. But something could be coming to a close. And we need to make sure that, that everything is, is, is in its place. And make sure that it, in fact, can come to a close. But let's do another card. Well, we have the Ten of Cups, and we've seen this before, 
not a lot, but uh, sometimes I tend to pull the same cards. And, and, I, and it's not like I don't shuffle because I sit here and while I talk in the initial part of this, I sit and I chat a bit. Well, I'm doing that because I'm shuffling. So rather than just sitting and listening to the sound of me shuffling, I just sit and gab a little bit, right? Well, well, this is one of the cards that we've been pulling lately. And uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, because like I say, I shovel. I shovel an amazing amount. So, so it's not like I'm not getting the deck shuffled well enough. Uh, but maybe these are just things that are coming up for us. But here we have the Ten of Cups, and here you see a family looking out at, at their home, and the kids are dancing, and everybody's happy. Here you have, you know, uh, uh, ten golden chalices are in sort of aligned there with the rainbow arching over them. So this is success and abundance and emotional fulfillment and security. Things are as they should be. And in a sense, you know, uh, the rainbow is like a doorway into their new experience of abundance and joy. And that's, that's really what we've got here. This is new beginnings. And so it's almost like we're wrapping things up here to put us on the precipice of something good. Do we dare draw another card? My luck, it'll be a court card. And when that happens, I don't draw a fourth card. I just figure, well, you know, we pushed our luck and we got a court card. But if you look at, at them numerologically, you've got a 10 and a and a four so that's a five so change and so if you're looking at at the ten of cups you're looking at abundance so perhaps we're about to have a change in terms of of uh, uh growth and abundance in a positive way well we have the star so the whole wish upon a star hopes dreams wishes And that's the 17th card of the Major Arcana. So as a Major Arcana card, that's a soul archetype. So higher self is uh, tapping us on the shoulder there. Seventeen gives a numerology of eight. And so you're looking at, uh, well, strength. You're looking at also, you're looking at a greater unity of self uh, where you're, you're truly, and, and it's more of a, it's more of like a leadership or an authoritarian, not authoritarian, but authoritative type of a of an awareness where where you get the bigger picture of things, and so you understand. I mean, here you have the goddess uh, pouring blessings both into the uh, water and onto land. And, and realistically, this, this really is about our hopes and dreams and wishes coming true. Uh, she's basically the blessed conduit. She provides insight and inspiration and hope and spiritual gifts. But really, this is about bright prospects and our dreams becoming reality. Uh, involved in this is intuition and optimism and openness. This also is also a card of healing. So here, maybe we're healing our, our mind a little bit. Maybe sometimes, <laughs> you know, we like to think it's our emotions that, 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 that get away from us and cause us all kinds of problems. But in fact, it's the intellect. You know, we start reasoning things. You know, our heart might tell us one thing and then, re then the so-called reason comes in and blows that all out of the water and gets us all confused. And pretty soon that's where we start feeling justified for the emotions that we have and and then we really dig in, right? So as much as our emotions can can guide us and take us in a, a funky direction, I think it's intellect that really, really guides the process and, and burrows us into belief systems and all of that that maybe keep us hanging on to emotions and wounds that no longer serve us. Um, what I've been noticing lately in the in the lunar transit so right now, of course, is Chiron is, is very active. It presents a strong influence and has been for some time. And, and really what that's telling us is it's not that we're going to be a wounded basket case. I mean, it might be, but that's because we're letting it. We're focusing on it and we're allowing that to be our reality instead of 
living solely in the present moment to derive you know our emotional well-being our intellectual well-being just from that present moment i mean sure there's some things that can influence all of the present but but typically uh, a lot of what we do, we do to ourselves, don't we? And so we bring up old wounds and old patterns of behavior that, that don't serve us or or maybe, you know, they're wounded feelings about something that happened that someone else did that, to hurt us. And so we can't let go of it, you know? And I think that in order for us to do that, we're going to have to learn to heal the mind. And that's what I think that the Four of Swords is telling us to do to let go of some of those uh, uh, beliefs that maybe aren't serving, service, serving us anymore so that more abundance and love and, and, and shared joy can, can uh, enter and, and, and actually be the, the foundation and structure of our lives. Um, again, you know, higher self informing the process, which is what happens when you see a major arcana card saying, hey, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay to 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 live in balance. It's okay to to uh, because in a sense, you know, being a, uh, what we have here is we have seven stars, you know, seven small stars that and, and then we've got the larger one, which is the 10. So in a sense, you know, she's balancing things on the side of emotional balance, isn't she? And that's where where we derive, you know, intuition and things like that. So, um, let's draw the room and see what the room has to say about this. Well, there goes a couple of cards on the floor, being messy today, scattering and not paying attention. <laughs> but that's interesting. Healing your mind <clears throat> in order for abundance to take, you know, because sometimes we can just totally convince ourselves of things that just aren't true. Well, that's intellect. That's the swords. That's the air element active. And then it gets our emotions all, you know, bound up in things that it doesn't need to be involved in. Well, here we have Othala, the 24th rune of the Elder Futhark, said to contain all aspects of the runes. All energies of, the, of all the runes contained within this. This is about inheritance in the Akash. It's what we come into realization of when we reach Dagaz on the 23rd rune. We, you know, that's energy. They say energy, uh, which I thought was very cool. Someone came up with this, not me, <laughs> but someone did. Energy at its saturation point begin, becomes its opposite. So it's about endings and then beginnings. Right, we're closing one thing and moving into another. But what we're but but spiritually, what that means is that we've we've achieved our awakening. We understand that we are in fact source presence focused into form, and we move into the akash, the mem the memory, the greater unified of the greater unified presence of self. Sometimes swords can create division because it doesn't. It doesn't allow for maybe the entire picture. We get really stuck. We get really focused, and we can't get out of it. One of the the, the better uh, examples of this, I think, is the Eight of Swords, where you see a woman who's bound, blindfolded and bound, and there's all these swords around her, you know, behind her, uh, and they're all pointed down into the ground. And so, what that's saying is that she's got to get out of the way of her own thought patterns in order to get anything done. And like I say, I think that our, our thoughts can really impact our emotional well-being. And we need to put a stop to that. We need to, to go into a, a kind of a, an ISA moment or a stasis moment where we bring everything to a still point and we let our thoughts settle so that we can actually see the truth of things because we can't, we convince ourselves of things that aren't happening anymore, you know? And we and our moods are then governed by all of that. And so it's a, but it's a choice that we make at any given moment how we choose to see things. If we can see things any way we want to. I mean, sure, the situation we're looking at or experiencing might not be fun or, or comfortable. It might be really awful. But how we deal with it makes all the difference. We can choose how we feel about it. We might not like it, but we don't have to be undone by it. So you see where 
taking a time out and a letting your mind heal a little bit and letting your thoughts settle into something that's a little more positive and, and to be able to see that 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 and, and and to separate the wheat from the chaff as they say you know figure out what's really important and what's really still happening and what needs to just be let go of you know and uh, uh and when you do that then you understand realistically the greater aspect of self which is what othala represents Let's take a look at the grimoire, though. As the 24th rune, you know, you're looking at a six energy, and, and that, of course, is higher self. And so basically what this is, to me, what Othala is doing, it's the rune of sacred space. It's about our inheritance and our ancestry. But it's not just about, it's not just about the inheritance and ancestry of physical form, because that isn't who we are. So our true ancestry is the Akash. It's, it's the collective memory that, that, that the souls that inhabit this earth all share. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is, the, is simply the greater aspect of self found in source energy. So that's everything and everyone, you know, that, that's part of the, the creation, right? That, that we're all aspects of. And so we're all part of that same energetic uh, impulse that said, okay, I want to explore more. I want to see what life is like in tangible form. I'm tired of just sitting here being. And so let's 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 do something. Let's expand. Let's let's uh, expand my mind and let's see what 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 life can be all about. So in tangible form, as opposed to just astral energies, you know, sort of pulsating throughout whatever it was it was pulsating throughout. Before creator decide, okay, I want to I want to do something else and did all this. The other thing that I wrote down is it's the state of order between, um, um, or the state of balance between order and chaos. And if you think about it, what you have here is is inguas or ingus, which is the seed as energy. That's the top part of it, the little diamond there. That's energy moving in all directions all at once. It's a sudden release of energy, which is what happens, you know, when, uh, well, it's what happens when uh, when the egg is fertilized in the in the womb, in utero. You have that explosion of 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 energy that that creates the child ultimately. That's what you have with inguas or ingus, however you want to say it. And then below that you have ebo, which is balanced energy exchange. You know, ideally, the whole point of being here is to learn how to balance dark with light, you know, or how to balance polarity within. Um, but it isn't just, again, <laughs> the inner polarity of the body and the personality and the ego and all of that that we're working with. The true duality is spirit versus versus the ego, okay, or the astral versus the the the, the physical form. That's your true duality trying to understand that you are in fact spirit we forget that we want to think okay my masculine side's coming out too much today well not enough feminine today or or i'm too emotional today so my feminine side is, is coming out no 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 it's about focus if you're on that level it's about where you're focusing it isn't about letting spirit inform that process and saying well why are you doing it to begin with why are you making the illusion real or any more real than it needs to be can't you just let it teach you something does it have to like move in and take up residence in your soul and in your psyche does it have to influence every second of your life forever and ever and always for all of eternity no <laughs> it doesn't it's a choice so when you're not allowing spirit to inform the process and understanding that this is just something to experience and to learn from you know and to stick in that akashic memory you know, and you're making it too real and you're not allowing for this to happen. And really, you know, if you if you listen to Eckhart Tolle, then you're listening to him say things like, you know, live in 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 the present moment. Uh, don't don't live in resistance to things. Be more in the allowing aspect of self. Uh, and that and that's another example of of the uh, higher self versus form that we experience higher self is allowing form is resistive i mean by its very nature by its very definition it's resistive otherwise we couldn't exist in these bodies something has to resist to then come together 
and make what we see around us, right? So there's always going to be a certain level of resistance or nafis, uh, inner nafis, uh, which is the uh, 10th rune of the Elder Futh arc, um, which is a new beginnings energy. So it's the energies of expansion. Again, it relates to Ingwas in that respect. It's that inner friction to get something done. Well, there's also an inner friction that causes us to come together in a body. So, so that's what that is. Uh, but with Othala, what it's saying is, you know, there's a bigger aspect here to think about. So when you're taking your time out for respite, to let your mind heal a little bit, to let your thoughts settle that might be getting in the way of your happiness, you know, think about the Othala aspect of it all. Think about the, because this is collective consciousness, okay? Not just in physical form, because remember, we've already gone through the awakening of Degas, and now we are here at Othala, so we know who we are, you see. And so we need to be living here. So that dreams become a reality. So be happy, whether you think you are or not. Choose to be happy anyway. Find a happy moment. Build on it. Find, and then you'll, you'll suddenly find that you find, no matter how depressed you are, no matter how upset you might be over your circumstances in life, all you have to do is start with one moment. You know, I don't care if it's looking at a puppy glyph or a, ki or, or a kitten glyph on Twitter or somewhere, you know, or glyph, gif, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking astrological glyphs. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't, I, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, something that gives you happiness, something that might make you smile or just shift you from whatever's going on in your head, you know, into just a little moment of peace and calm and happiness. You know, if it's if it's being at the grocery store and seeing a little uh, and hearing a, the child, a little a little toddler laugh, you know, that one gets me every time. I can't help but smile. Right. So no matter what kind of mood I'm in, if I if I just go and I, I do one little thing, then it can shift that. And then if you can keep in that mode and maybe do one more and then one more, you see how it builds pretty soon. You get into the habit of when you're starting to feel uncomfortable, you go find something fun to do, to look at or something positive. It does it just to just to take your attention. You know, yeah, it is that it is that you know insignificant. It really is. It doesn't take much to shift your attention away from whatever it is that's got your focus into something happier. And if you do that. Pretty soon, once you start getting unhappy about something, you're going to start looking for something to be happy about. And all I'm saying is that it can just be an interesting tool to use if you're finding that you're always in that negative energy where you're not feeling happy and you're feeling uncomfortable all the time. But <laughs> that may be something that can, I mean, just something so simple, right, can, can just shift you from it just something very very tiny can have the most effect and it's so interesting that it's it's an expression of love or joy or happiness that doesn't and it doesn't take much just a moment and you can build on it, it I, I, and i i can i'm telling you it works i know i've done it i do it all the time it's, it's sometimes it's the only way i get through the day especially being an empath, you know, if you're empathic, you know, you pick up on all this stuff. I, and if you're watching, I have to be careful with some of the stuff I watch on the television, particularly uh, if it's stuff happening in real time, if it's on the news and, and you're watching a live thing uh, when the, uh, uh, I don't know if the shooting incident in uh, Aurora was live when I saw it, but I had to I had to, you know, like leave the room <laughs> because just knowing about it, I'm tapping into it and into the fear and, and the misery and all of that. And it's, it's, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, to do it. So I have to shift my attention and my focus so I don't focus on it. And I don't allow those, that knowledge, you know, that awareness to really take hold because then I can't let go of it. And it affects me throughout my day. I, I sit and I worry and all this other stuff. Right. So, so, um, anymore i just try to divert my attention literally take my eyes and move them someplace else or turn it off or get up and leave or or look at something else and not really focus on on what it's telling me so that i don't get stuck there 
uh, in those emotions about what's going on. So, um, you know, the thing about being empathic, you can't help anybody if you're a mess and we can become a mess very easily if we don't, you know, if we haven't if gotten the whole discernment thing down, which I'm beginning to hate that word. You're hearing it all the time in the UFO community. It's like, well, you have to discern what's true. It's like, no, no, <laughs> you can't. You just can't. You're always going to be guessing. You hope that this is true, but you don't know. Nobody knows. And so, it, you know, so it's like, oh, we're going to talk about discernment. It's like, no. I don't really think that you can. And I know because I'm an empath and, it, and it's very, very hard to, to know what the truth is. Sometimes you, you, especially when you fervently want to believe something. So in any event, sorry for the, sorry for, for that was a digression anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, but, but the whole thing about a bit about being empathic is that you have to be able to know what's your feeling and what's something else's. And, and so if you have these really extreme reactions to watching the news, um, it's likely not you. It's it's what you're picking up on the the energy surrounding that and the emotions surrounding what's going on. That's actually what you're picking up on and what you're experiencing within yourself. And it's easy if you're not if you're not aware of what's going on to think that it's your feelings and it's actually not. So, uh, so there's a lot of that going on right now. There's um, uh, a lot of uh, un, un instability with respect to our government, as everyone knows. <laughs> you can't turn on the news without knowing that. And uh, uh, so I think that that it's easy for us to get caught up in the mental, you know, goings on of of all of it. And that may be why this card came up today. And we're just going to have to let some of this go and let you know, the powers that be, unfortunately, handle all of it. Uh, we can't, as private citizens, do anything anyway. So if it's if it's something other than call people who aren't going to listen to you. So it's just, uh, you know, you're kind of in this this no one situation while you wait to see what hammer is going to drop next. And 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 so it's an uncomfortable place to be. And so it, it tends to interfere with hopes and dreams and wishes and moving on and being happy and all of that. Um, so I guess, I guess the, the recommendation then would be to try to stay in, in as, as uh, uh, a specific, you know, as present, to have as, as much of a present moment focus, that's the way I'll say it, as you possibly can uh, today so that, you know, allow, allow whatever thoughts that are, that are traveling around in your head to just settle and, and let them, uh, uh, just let them go and see if maybe your 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 happiness quotient goes up a little bit when you do that. Um, your hopes aren't dashed. Your wishes aren't aren't gone. Uh, they're around the corner. Um, but in order to manifest the happiness, maybe you just need to choose to be happy in spite of the rest of this nonsense that's going on. Why give that any of your power? Because that's all we're really doing. We're empowering the negative. So turn your back on all of it and see what you actually have in your life. The abundance that's there. No matter how meager of a lifestyle someone may, may live, either through choice or not, you can still have abundance uh, in your life. So even if it's an abundance of spirit. And sometimes, you know, it's all we really have anyway, isn't it? So why not just live there? Instead of the ego moment of it all, live <laughs> in the spirit moment of it all. So anyhow, so that's kind of cool. Well, here we have, so then if that's a seven and that's a one, that's eight and four is 11. So there's your... There's your master number for illumination, too. And then collectively, it brings us back to the numerology of the star. If we include the numerology of the rune in it, too, it brings us back to the star. So again, it brings us back to spirit. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Anyhow, well, you know, I love when stuff like that happens, don't you? These little these little synchronicities. Yeah, that's really cool. 
Yeah, because that's a six. Being 24, that's a six. Yeah, add it to 11. That's 17, which is the star. Hmm, fascinating. Okay, well, now we know the direction we need to go today. Well, that's pretty cool. So anyhow, um, maybe you can find a way to put that into a magical working here over the full moon, huh? Maybe you can do an alignment ritual. Do one today. Do an alignment ritual today. Yeah. Or, well, you could do one all three days, really. I like to do alignment rituals on the crone moon, though. But in any event, you can do it any time. But yeah, I would do that. Something like that. That would be really awesome. Um, anything to try to let go of the focus on the negativity that's going on in the world. And put that focus back on your daily, your daily life and in creating joy and happiness there. Or just simply acknowledging it because I'm telling you with, with them holding, the couple holding their arms up like they are, it's almost like they're acknowledging their joy and abundance. It's not that they've, you know, th th well, that they've created certainly, but they're acknowledging it like, see, look at what we've got. Look at all we have. This shared abundance, this shared joy. So, interesting. Very cool. Anyhow, thanks. So, I guess that's it. I guess, I guess that's all I have here. That should be it, I think. I don't think we need to add another card. I think this is, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Anyhow, thanks a lot for coming by. I appreciate it. Again, if it's your first time, welcome and click subscribe. Uh, if you've been here before again, thank you again for, for coming back. I so appreciate it. Um, yeah, just kind of give your mind a little rest today from all of the worries and the thoughts. Focus on joy, manifest joy. There's your abundance, the abundance of spirit. <laughs> so anyhow, have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.